and welcome to the Wednesday edition of DC Today, recording once again from beautiful Manhattan here in New York. And I guess kind of a boring day in the market on a closing basis, but there's some not boring things happening in the news cycle I want to talk through. Um, first of all, we'll just kind of cover the market, then cover a news story I think is pertinent to investors, and then go through a couple economic data points. Um, okay, first of all, the Dow ended up down about 50 on the day. It had been down about 250. At one point, I think it was up 40. You had nearly a 300 point uh, spread from the high level of the day to the low level, but the market closed well off of its low. The S&P was actually up a tiny bit on the day and the NASDAQ was also up a tiny bit on the day, a little bit more than the S&P. Um, the Treasury market didn't move much. The 10-year was up uh, about one basis point and it yield uh, still just right below the 4% mark there on the 10-year yield. Um, the worst performing sector today was energy. It was down about 1%, but the top performing sector today was real estate which was up 1.3%. It had been the biggest drag yesterday. So there was a, a bit of a, a retracement to recovery today in, in real estate. Uh, oil was down a little over 1%, still hanging out there right around $76, $77 a barrel. Um, so again, not a lot of newsworthy things into the actual market. You had the Powell testimony in the Senate yesterday, spoke to the House today, and as expected, there was nothing to really add on to. I, you would think anything particularly profound he would have said in the Senate testimony yesterday, and indeed he did. Today was mostly a, a kind of repeat. Um, Silvergate is a very large bank. It is regulated by FDIC, but it is known as a um, crypto-related bank because it would lend uh, to depositors off of crypto-based assets, so it was not a crypto exchange in the way a lot of these other high profile names you've heard about, your Gemini's and your FTX's and your Celsius's and these other names that have been in the news a lot, uh, I, the bulk of which are in bankruptcy or investigation or different things like that. But today, uh, Silvergate announced that they're shutting down and liquidating. They were also similarly caught up in the whole kind of uh, run on the crypto space that evolved out of Q4 of last year. The reason I bring it up is that crypto, or uh, excuse me, Bitcoin was right near $25,000 a coin uh, just two weeks ago now, 16 days to be precise, and it closed today a little below $21,000. And so again, the systemic space, the systemic um, environment um, surrounding adjacent area of the exchanges, the banks, those that are involved in the kind of ecosystem of this world have a profound impact on the overall price level and sentiment. And that's been evidenced again. And the reason I bring it up to, first of all, any clients listening that are not uh, through anything we do at Bonson Group connected to these names or, or, or the notion of being invested into cryptocurrency, but I bring it up uh, as, again, a reflection of the state of risk assets when one goes into some of the more speculative domains that we happen to not believe in, that you become very captive to circumstances totally um, outside of your control, totally uh, independent of what you would think was the investment thesis you invested in. And we're seeing that play out right now in, in crypto yet again. Um, so on the economic data front, ADP reported 242,000 jobs created in February in the private sector. The, the ADP report has not been very correlated with the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is sort of the more official governmental jobs report that we get every month. And so unsurprisingly, um, there isn't much of a market response to this. But anecdotally, it does appear that there was another strong jobs month, and I have no reason to think that there wouldn't be such again in the BLS on Friday. We shall see. Uh, the JOLTS data, the job openings, came in for February as well, 10.8 million. That was about 300,000 higher than expected, but a little lower than the 11.2 million we saw last month. But either way, you still see a stubbornly high uh, data point out of job openings. I had dinner last night here in the city with a, a macro analyst 
um, that I'm quite close with and very fond of. And he was speaking to a theory he's working on that a lot of the job openings data might have to do with people who have post uh, COVID been capitalizing on what he calls side hustles, uh, various aspects of cash flow generative activity that might not be showing up in that data. So it's interesting to me, prima facie, but um, we're, he, he's working on some more empirical support before I, I think any more actionably about it. Finally, the trade deficit came in at 68.3 billion in February. Uh, that was, I guess, just a little bit lower than was expected. But the main thing, because I don't really care a whole lot about the delta between imports and exports each month, I care about the total trade the combination of imports and exports that speaks to overall economic activity. And it was up 7.6% in January of this year versus January of last year. It's about $18.1 billion, which as a percentage of denominator, is 7.6% increase year over year. Uh, that does speak to a very ongoing, healthy, substantial improvement in supply chain conditions versus where they were a year ago. So that was my takeaway from the trade deficit data. Um, I'm going to leave it there. There's a few nuggets in there on economic data. I like to keep it short and sweet. Uh, not anything more interesting to report on the market itself. Thursday is a new day. I'll be on Varney tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on Fox Business. And we'll have a full report for you uh, tomorrow night at the end of the day. As always, thanks for listening to, watching, and reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.